Hello, I'm the Media Wiz, because one art form wasn't enough, and I'm just gonna say this right now, I don't think I'll ever review Food Fight. Let's face it, Food Fight is an obvious target for reviewers nowadays. Despite being reviewed by tons of people at least a year or so after the movie actually came out, people like Hunter, Digital Disasters, Media Hunter, Bob Show, and I Hate Everything, it became really popular once JonTron and the Nostalgia Critic did it. So yeah, it's kind of like Birdemic. People have reviewed it, but once JonTron and a Channel Awesome member do it, it's all of a sudden cool to talk about. But as the video's title suggests, this isn't a review of Food Fight, so why'd I bring it up? Well, take everything that's wrong with Food Fight and give it to the Scottish. What do you get? Well, obviously, you get Sir Billy. Sir Billy is a 2012 animated movie that came straight out of Scotland, even starring James Bond himself, Sean Connery. This movie took at least six years for them to finally get the production finished, starting in 2006, finally getting released in theaters in Scotland, and once it hit the US, it just went straight to DVD. The reason I compare this to Food Fight is, well, okay, for several reasons, but the first major one being the production being a lot more interesting than the film itself. From what I can tell about the director-writer couple, the Hartmans, they were said to be very hard to work with, having no idea what they were doing, and they seemed to refuse any type of criticism that their staff offered. So yeah, think of them as the Scottish animated equivalent of Amy and Sammy Bazaglo. So, how bad is Sir Billy? Let's find out. The movie begins with an opening ripping off James Bond. The film proper begins with Sean Connery giving a monologue, which I swear was just random audio they recorded and just threw in there. When I was just a boy, everything used to be rare, you know? A rare fight. We had a rare laugh about something. Or, what a rare film. I don't know. Maybe we used the word so much that we wore it out. <laughs> yeah, like most people, I'd say you probably got Banjo-Kazooie nuts and bolts to blame for that. We then see two cops loading a truck full of crates filled with beavers as they're moving these beavers from Scotland to Norway. Thank goodness our Scottish Parliament squashed the reintroduction of those smelly things, huh? Did I mention I'm not a villain? Little by little, the truck hits the mountainside, probably because of the lack of, oh, I don't know, guardrails, and some of the crates end up falling out of the truck. <laughs> you see, nothing but blooming trouble, these damned animals. Why does the truck driver fall asleep? I mean, okay, you could say that he's knocked out, but he's clearly snoring aloud, so... This really isn't a proper reaction to an automobile accident. The evil cop goes down to collect some of the beavers, leaving one behind. Bessie, who will be one of our main characters. I'm all alone now! <laughs> Get ready for that, people. That becomes one of her main character traits. Oh goodness, please wake up from this bad dream! <laughs> Flash forward just a mere five years later, yeah, seriously, and I thought the one-year jump in Spy Kids 4 was bad enough, as we're introduced to Vicky the Duck. And now, the most racist portrayal of black people since the crows in Dumbo. I should be in my alley out of season, enjoying the fine climate of South Beach. Instead, I'm flying about following crazy goats and mad Scotsmen in skirts, huh? huh. We're then introduced to the small Scottish village of Catterness as we meet Guy with permanent buck tooth duck face and stereotypical New Yorker lady. <laughs> Have you got any of those Mrs. Plumpus pies with blueberries? Ha ha ha! Plumpus arrived this afternoon. Oh, fantastic! As a girl originally raised in Brooklyn, I just want to say I find this character very offensive. What? It's not a stereotype. It's business. And now we finally get to meet our title character, Sir Billy, and his talking goat, Gordy, who is wearing a jumpsuit and talks in bad ghetto slang. Oh, there's no one quite like you in this hood. Way to go, Alan Cummings. You're officially making Son of the Mask and the Smurfs look like good career moves. They go to pick up Billy's grandson, Jake, who looks like Jimmy Neutron with Harry Potter glasses. Also, for some reason, Jake and his family live in a castle outside the village, complete with the waiter, who looks like Gru if he got rid of the hunchback and got a nose job. I'm sitting here thinking I could be watching a Wallace and Gromit movie. Thanks a lot, movie. As they drive, they see New Yorker lady with her sister who came all the way from America. So Billy, meet my sister, Tony Turner. Does she have a Let's Play channel? Yeah, 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 I know, I know, that was an easy joke. Well, hello. This suitcase, I am so heavy. I just don't have the strength that I used to. Yes, that's a good idea. Make the 80-year-old man carry your luggage. What? Meanwhile with Bessie, she was adopted by a family of rabbits and has a brother who is easily the most punchable character in this entire movie. God, and you thought Angel Bunny was bad enough. This 
is a magical place, even for a beaver butt like you. Do I have to do it today? Do I? Now that's enough, Messy. This is one of the oldest sports in the Highlands, and your Uncle Red, being a past champion, has pulled a lot of strings to get you on today, lady. Yes, they signed her up for something that she clearly didn't even want to be a part of. Way to go, people. W great parenting right there. Expect a TLC reality show based on these people someday. Surprise of surprises, Bessie's really good at the sport, which makes douchebag brother jealous, which results in him and Mom Bunny getting thrown off a cliff, and Bessie jumps in trying to save them. Some animals go to get help, and little by little, this rabbit, which I swear was voiced by an American doing a bad Scottish accent... <laughs> sorry, sorry, <laughs> I've been looking for you everywhere, sir Billy, uh. and Gordon, we really need your help, we need your help... ...gets Billy and Crew's attention. So Billy goes to Town Square and rallies all the villagers to come help save two rabbits and a beaver. And you'll notice one of the major problems with this movie already. The pacing. The way this scene plays out, this feels like a scene that might come before the climax of the film, but we're only 25 minutes in, making this incredibly rushed. And here's yet another problem. There's way too many characters in this movie. Like, half the characters in this scene alone, like the Baron, the Admiral, and his family over here, contribute dick to the movie other than just terrible exposition or filler scenes. Can you imagine the impact of such increased efficiency in this parochial village? I used to keep the lookout on the South Joys of all, you know. I have sharp eyes for this sort of thing. <laughs> How fascinating, Admiral. <laughs> and I just have to ask, what is with this editing here? Uh-oh. Hey, you over there! I did not touch a single frame of that footage. Billy is just talking to the villagers in one shot, and then it just jump cuts to him all alone talking to the cop. Hey, yes, you. In the miserable outfit. What? Come here. I've heard about you, and I'd like a word with you. Yeah, what do you want? Now listen here. I find you odd, <laughs> strange even, and my gut tells me that you are indeed up to no good. Hmm. Didn't know Billy was an NWA fan. And you and I could be commended for superb investigations. What is the cop's motivation again? I mean, okay. Early on, they established that it's his job to get rid of the beavers, but then he says he wants to get rid of them because they'll ruin his fishing. My fishing would have been out the window! Now he's saying he wants to do it so he can get a promotion, and then later on in the movie, he says he does it just because he hates beavers. Using these windows over me after all these years over a stinking, smelly beaver! Motivation! It's the reason our characters actually have purpose! Meanwhile, Billy and Gordy leave Jake in the car, yeah, you might as well just add Jake to the list of characters who have no purpose in this movie, as they find Mom Bunny in this surprisingly dark moment. But I'm thinking that her hind legs might be paralyzed. Oh no, does that not mean that she could have broken her back? Okay, not only does this scene completely contradict the physics of this world that they've established earlier, But the scene's dark tone just feels forced and out of nowhere. Well, I gotta applaud you, movie. You're making the death scenes from Lion King, Bambi, and Old Yeller look uplifting. And that is not a compliment. Anyway, Bessie and her brother are heading towards a damn overflow system, which the Baron refuses to turn off. Also, I gotta ask, if everyone was able to get there before they did, how long is this river? Like a thousand feet? Anyway, they're able to save the bunny, but Bessie goes down the overflow, and Gordy springs into action with yet another bad James Bond reference. And they get Bestie safe onto the boat. You think that'd be the end of the movie, right? No, you're wrong. Gordy, for some reason, has a cramp and starts drowning. And then he feels fine, and then they get him back onto the boat. That was pointless. Oh my, that sub sure reminds me of another adventure. Forget Indiana Jones! I should be called Jemima Bond. I get it, Sean Connery was in this movie. Stop reminding me of things I could be watching instead. So then Gordy wants to get off the boat for some reason, which by the way, how is that boat still balancing on that sub? Shouldn't it have just toppled over by now? Gordy grabs onto a rope that's on Vicky's plane, but he lets go too early and falls to a dock and is potentially dead. God, this movie has more fake endings than any of the Lord of the Rings movies. And then we see flashbacks to all the times that Billy and Gordy have had together, including bad references to Clockwork Orange, Singing in the Rain, Rocky, and Casablanca. Do these people go to the Freeburg and Seltzer School of Comedy? References are not automatically jokes. Of course he's alive, but then the cop steals Bessie. Gotta say, for as rushed as this movie's pacing is, it really seems to not want to end. The cop speeds off and Billy follows him and oh come on! Not one, but two more James Bond references. 
This becomes really baffling when you find out that Sean Connery really hated being in any of the James Bond movies, so why they're referencing better movies in this crappy movie is really beyond me. I mean, that's like an internet celebrity referencing all the older videos that made him popular and crap talking them. Oh, I'm bad, aren't I? So the chase continues through locations that look like rejected sets from the movie, but they wanted to keep them in anyway. They get cornered by police, and just when it seems that Billy is done for, this happens. Officer McKenzie, I'm arresting you yes. under the criminal justice bill for intention to harm wildlife taken from a private estate. Furthermore, for theft of one said Land Rover belonging to Sir William Sedgwick. And finally, for illegal impersonation. Sure, wh why not? He, he gets arrested. We, we only got 11 minutes left. I I'm not questioning it. You really shouldn't either. He's, um, a different kind of widower than you. He's never, ever dated, understand? Never yeah, Billy's also 80. Does that mean that Billy's the Scottish equivalent of this guy? Anyway, everyone gathers at a pub to celebrate. Have you seen the Lock Jazz Monster yet from your big tub? I have, of course, numerous times. Very long neck. A sexual innuendo. Billy makes a sappy speech, these three sing a funk song, everyone has a crappy dance number. Just because Shrek did it right does not mean that you will. And Billy and that Tony chick drive off into the moonlight, presumably to go shag somewhere. Oh, I'm so glad he's found a wee bit of happiness now. <laughs> it's been long overdue. Even if she is a brazen lassie with a funny accent and a dare say an enviable chest, they don't make them like that over here now, do they? Kids movie! And that's it. It just fades to black and that's the end of the movie. So that was Sir Billy. And that was worse than anything I was expecting. I honestly didn't want to hate this movie from its trailer, but wow this one is bad. The animation is ugly, the characters are annoying, unfunny, or both, the humor is surprisingly adult for a kid's film, and the constant references to better movies is all the reason I'd say that this is Scotland's equivalent of Food Fight. This is, bar none, one of the top five worst movies I've ever reviewed on this show, which is something I didn't want to say, but god this one's just so bad, can we do something better next time? Oh hey, Quest Your Girls 3. Oh, really? We're doing the alternate universe thing again? Hey, Liv! Yo. Oh, God, this is gonna be brutal.